Hi, this is Simon with IQRF. In the previous tutorials, we demonstrated how you can control your network through the IQRF cloud and how you can modify functionality of DCTRs with the custom DPA handler. The next step is to show you how easy it could be to integrate the iCurve network control directly into your software and hardware, whatever platform or operating system you are using. So, the topic of today is the iCurve Software Development Kit. There is a wide range of hardware you can use to control your wireless network, such as PC, server or embedded PC like Raspberry or Black PC. All these solutions, regardless if they run on Windows or Linux, have one thing in common though. They all support Java. That's why the iCurf SDK was built on this very popular platform, so with all of the different hardware, SDK libraries and number of other Java libraries available on the internet, your flexibility in creating your control application or complete device is virtually unlimited. So how can you work with the iCurf SDK? You have your control application and using Java libraries of the iCurf SDK, you create Java objects for an iCurf network. Those objects then take care of translating your commands into DPA requests and send them through one of the available communication interfaces – USB, UART, SPI or Ethernet. The interface is set up in a configuration file, so your application works completely independently on the interface you want to send your data through. Your application can control more networks, so once the DPA request is delivered to the right coordinator, it's translated into an IQ mesh packet and sent out to the network. In this way, you can control the predefined DPA peripherals as well as your custom ones developed based on the custom DPA handler. The iCurve SDK enables you not only to control an iCurve network, but also to connect your application to different Internet of Things clouds, databases and other solutions. Most of these products are supported with ready Java libraries as well, which makes development of your solution very fast and easy. Now, how can you start with the iCurf SDK? First of all, you need to download the iCurf SDK package. You will find it on the download section of the iCurf.org website under the development and service software right here. Then you will need NetBeans 7 or higher and Java 7. Regarding hardware, we will use the DSDPA01 we have ready from the previous tutorials. That means with five bonded nodes running on general hardware profiles with one custom peripheral. When we get the NetBeans running, we hit this button to open a project. As you can see, there are two Maven projects prepared. The first one is for standard peripherals, the second one for user peripherals. We start with the standard peripherals. You open the project and you go to the file dependencies. Here you will find a list of libraries you need to get installed. You do it by clicking the right button on the file and then hit Download Declare Dependencies. Third parties libraries will get downloaded and installed automatically. Then it is necessary to install MicroS libraries manually. Let me just show you the path to the first file. You'll find the rest of the libraries analogically. You hit Select and Install Locally. Now we select an example we want to work with. You click the right button on the project name and select properties. There is number of categories here. You go to the category run and hit the browse button for the main class. We make this window bigger to see all prepared examples and complete names. There is number of DPA commands such as run discovery, fast response command, IO, LEDs, thermometer, UART and so on. For the purposes of this demonstration, we will collect temperature from all nodes in our network with the fast response command. Now we need to get communication to our coordinator setup. We run the iCurf IDE and connect a CKUSB 04A with our coordinator to the computer. In the left button corner, you can see the programmer was connected successfully. We go to the tools, USB classes and we switch the programmer to the CDC iCurf mode. Once the CDC class is activated, the programmer gets disconnected from the IDE and the red LED starts flashing. Then we find out the communication port the programmer is connected to our computer through. We go back to the NetBeans, select the files and config. We open the network settings and modify the number of the communication port right here. We save this with Ctrl S and we have everything ready to run our program. We hit the run button and we can observe an output of the application in this lower window. We make it bigger so we have more lines displayed. First of all, there is an execution of the initialization process. 
there could be more networks controlled by one application, so first of all the network number 1 is created. Then there is a coordinator created and based on the enumeration a list of available services or peripherals as we call them in the DPA terminology is displayed. There is number of standard peripherals and one custom peripheral number 32 we created over the previous tutorial. There are 5 nodes bonded, the discovery is run and we get also 5 nodes discovered. Here is the output of the enumeration process of all the nodes. We can see here the network number 1 was successfully created and the initialization was completed. Then the temperature fast respond command is sent out and the results in Celsius are displayed right here. So the program is running well. Now let's take a look on the key lines of the code. We need to go to the source packages, open the FRC peripherals and then the code of the application we've just run. We enlarge this window and we scroll down a bit to get to the real beginning of this application. First of all we create the main SDK object with the objects of the coordinator nodes and peripherals. This is related to the process of the initialization. Here is a reference to the configuration file where you can set up the communication interface for instance. In the following code we select to communicate with the network number 1, we get connected to the particle coordinator, we create the FRC peripheral and we create DPA request based on the predefined FRC commands. In the next step, we send the temperature FRC request using the peripherals and commands created in the previous steps. Then we just display the data and that's it. Your application running on any hardware supporting Java is ready. Now it just depends on your project what kind of hardware would be the best, which example and library of the iCraft SDK you would use and if you work with other Java libraries available on the internet. So make your products wireless. Your options as well as opportunities are unlimited. And don't forget, with the iQRF, it's simple. This video is just a small piece of a complete iQRF video tutorial set. To get a full picture and understanding of the iQRF technology, please watch previous and following iQRF tutorials.